Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy rodriguez Shomont. And I'm talking Colorado football. But before we jump in, thank you for your continued support of our channel. Let's just jump right in on this bad boy. You thought I could never praise Deion Sanders, right? Well, you're wrong. I've always said that I am an I am completely objective. I don't like Deion Sanders. I've said that a thousand and one times. And even after the game, I still don't like Deion Sanders. But thankfully, finally, finally, Colorado ran the ball. Now, Colorado State sucks. They're they're trash. They're trash. They might be worse than North Dakota State. But... I've been saying it for two weeks. You got to run the ball. You have to make some level of an attempt to run the ball. It doesn't mean you're going to be successful at running the ball, but it gives the opponent, it makes them defend the run. Now, end of the day, Shador Sanders still threw 49 times. And they only ran the ball 19 times. But when they ran the ball, they were very effective running the ball. They ran the ball 19 times for 109 yards. If you subtract the doors, two carries for negative three, that's 17 for 112. Um, realistically, it was the top two guys because Charlie Offered all didn't play until the final possession, I think it was. Michael Welch and Isaiah Augusta went for 15 carries combined for 96 yards. That's a huge, huge impact on the game. And <clears throat> while I didn't, it, it didn't initially – mean much in terms of the score because Colorado State was in control of that game until midway through the second quarter. They're up 3 nothing. They're controlling tempo. They're controlling pace. Colorado's not done much of anything. They only had one decent drive that, that resulted in a missed field goal, but otherwise it was three and out, three and out, and then the missed field goal. So you had three possessions in which it was three and out, a missed field goal, and three and out. And on that third and that fourth possession, <clears throat> it's first, it's second and 13 from the Colorado 44. And Shador is under pressure and chucks one downfield, incomplete. And Andrew LaRich, number 55, for CSU, for some reason, decides to put his helmet under Shador's chin. No sense. It it made no sense. Ball was released, and this guy decides to give Shador a little taste, and puts. I mean, he really he, he could have been ejected for that, you know, targeting thing because I mean he put his helmet right into his chip. That turned a third and thirteen and a likely punting situation into a first down, and from that point on. From that point on, CU controlled the rest of the game. Colorado flat dominated the rest of the game. They end up scoring on that possession to make it 7-3. They force a three and out. They come right back. Touchdown. It's 14-3 at halftime after CSU misses a field goal from 52 yards out, which would have made it 14-6. Nonetheless, it's 14-3 at the half. <clears throat> Colorado played good defense. Colorado State's offense is bad. You thought they'd be better, but Braden Fowler and Nicolosi was absolutely horrendous. My man, if you're going to talk shit the week of the game, you better back it up. You better back it up. You better not talk a bunch of shit. And then, I mean, keeping it a buck, homie, you better not talk a bunch of shit and then look like that. <clears throat> Fowler Nicolosi fucking sucked. And look, Tory Horton was hurt. You can see it. He got hurt last week, and he wasn't right the whole game. But Fowler Nicolosi was straight up garbage. And they ran the ball well. They ran 31 times, 131 yards. They were successful running the ball. But Nicolosi, Fowler Nicolosi stunk. He throws back-to-back, -back, he throws picks on back-to-back -back possessions. First possession of the second half, he throws a pick. I mean, he throws a pick that is like, what are you doing, my man? Gives Colorado the very, very short field at the 12-yard line. It's 21-3 after that. Two plays, touchdown. Then they fumble the ball. 
Sorry, it was not two picks and rolls. Then they fumble the ball going in at the four. You know, when you're sitting here like, bro, first and goal from the four and you fumble. See, you fumbled it right back after four plays. So now CSU has the ball back again at the Colorado 48. And what does Nicol- Brand- Fowler Nicolosi do? He throws across his body. Across his body. I don't know if that was the one. One of, the, one of them was the one. I don't even know. He threw one across his body that was such a bad throw. You're like, what the fuck is this kid doing? What is this kid doing? He he was absolutely horrendous, man. You cannot talk shit and be that bad. <clears throat> but overall, what that little bit of a running game did for Colorado, and they still threw the ball way too much. But for what that little bit of a running game did, it allowed Shador Sanders to have time to throw. Now, CSU's defensive line stinks. They're not anywhere near what Nebraska's is. And we're going to start finding out next week <clears throat> what Colorado's really got. They play Baylor. Now, uh, Baylor is sitting at 2-1. and one. They have wins over Air Force and Tarlington State. They lost to Utah. Wasn't a bad loss. They lost 23 to 12, so they were competitive. This is a home game for Colorado. Colorado is a one point favorite. But you're not seeing that aired out like offensive juggernaut you saw last year from Colorado. We can say whatever we want about their defense. Those boys could score points last year. And this year, 31, 10, 28. Like these aren't barn burner numbers they're putting up right now. We shall see if it changes, but now they're about to go into that Big 12 season. They got Baylor, UCF, Kansas State, Arizona, Cincinnati, Texas Tech, Utah, Kansas, and Oklahoma State. So they got a tough – it's not an easy sledding. And people think it was an easy sledding. It's not an easy sledding. I stand by 4-8. and I I said that before. I stand on it 4-8. and That was my call. But I got to give Deion Sanders credit. They adjusted. They finally adjusted. He didn't start Charlie Offerdahl. So clearly the guy that was starting today was the guy that supposedly was the guy that he claimed was the dog who didn't play. Yeah, that's the guy. Michael Welch, freshman, 5'9", 205. This is the guy you didn't play for the first two weeks and you said you sat him and all that other shit. It makes no sense. This guy should have been playing. He's clearly your best running back. And for some reason, you didn't use him. I don't know why. I won't even pretend to know why. That said, adjustments were made. Colorado comes away with a 28-9 win, convincing win, dominating win. But I saw an article from ESPN where they said, you know, they dominated from beginning to end. No, they didn't. There was a three. They were down three nothing for the first 22 minutes of the game. The first 22 minutes again, they're down three nothing. The CSU's offense stinks, and they still can't move the ball very much. And it took a bad penalty to seemingly wake up. Colorado, get them going. And from that point on, it was they, they cruised. They they won this game easily. They had a short field for 12 yards. They, they, they took advantage of opportunities that they had. Now, <clears throat> end of the game situation. And this is where I get so ungodly frustrated with Deion Sanders. Colorado's up 28-9 with 2.55 left. If there is ever a time to end the game running the ball, this is the time that you do it. You don't empty your bench. You don't put Charlie Offerdahl in the game. You leave the kid, Michael Welch, who you just said two weeks, two games ago was a dog and blah, blah, blah. Well, he showed to be a pretty damn good running back. He looked good. And he's not in the game. This is a situation. You hand the ball off, hand the ball off, hand the ball off. Get a first down, run the game out, game's over. Not Dion. <clears throat> this is where you get this is where I get frustrated and, and I get bothered by Dion. And, and I'm sh- and you, you, he shows you again who he is. Get 20, 28 to 9. I don't want to hear about anything. I, I saw his comments, which I will read to you in a second. But they opened up that possession with a pass. And then another pass. And then it's a two-minute warning. Charlie Offered all runs for 12 yards, gets a first down. There's 144 left. The game 
is over. Put your knee down and run the clock out. CSU had two timeouts. They had two or they had one. Let me see specifically. It doesn't even matter. You have a situation where the game can be ended. And what does Dion do? Dion extends the game. He flat out extends the game. I think they had two timeouts left. There's a minute 44. So let's do the math. <clears throat> you run the ball. I'm sorry. So it's 144 left. If you look at what happened, Colorado State didn't call timeout. Colorado State was really, was going to let the game go. This is this is the difference between Dion and other people. It's 28-9. CSU is going to let the game go. It's over. So he offered all gets the first down, and there's 144 left. They run the ball for four yards. Instead of putting their knee down, Shador Sanders throws a throws the deep ball. He throws one to the end zone from like 40 yards. And then on third and six, he throws it again. And on fourth and six, he throws it again. <clears throat> the game is over. You have three plays in which you should be putting your knee down and ending the game. One, why is Shador Sanders even in that game right there? But let's take a look at what Dion had to say about it. Because I saw the comments and I just was just like, man, this guy. This guy just says shit that just is mind blowing. Before I jump into what he said, I want to look at what he said in his opening statement after the game. He says, a couple of players took shots at the whole program and a few of our other players, so it is what it is. Why does Deion Sanders concern himself with this shit? Why? Why does he allow what a couple of players from another team says about his team? He, he says that the disrespect was uncalled for throughout the week. We just want to play some football. We knew it would be personal. I think one of our coaches, Phillips, during warm-ups, one of the CSU guys ran into him and elbowed him, which is uncalled for. I just pray that our kids never act in that matter because I know you guys would have a field day if they did, but I know you won't do anything or say anything when the opposing team does that versus us. My goodness, Dion. Oh, my God. You're so – woe is me. Oh, poor pobrecito. What the hell, really? Are you fucking for real, bro? You're sitting here talking about your one of your play. Your son threw a watch in the face of a coach last year. You fucking Nimrod. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Do you not pay attention to everything that Shador Sanders does, or is just he exempt from these? I hope my players don't do this message. Because he's the worst one of them all. He's the worst of them all. After Travis Hunter scores, what is Shador doing? He's going into the end zone. He's talking crap to the fans while the other players are celebrating with each other. Culture of me over culture of we. It's always been that way. It still will be that way. I can compliment Dion. He made adjustments in this game. They made adjustments. They ran the ball. They played well. They deserve what they got. They deserve the win. They earned it. But then Dion does says this stuff. <clears throat> and you sit here and you're like, oh God, Dion, come on, man. Are you really trying to play the role of victim again? You're always the victim. Your team is always the victim. He says this. Uh Where is it? Okay, this is now what Dion says on throwing the ball three times in a row with a lady. I mean, we wanted to score. What? You wanted to score? Why don't you put your backup QB in? <clears throat> You're up 28-9. Game's over. Why isn't your backup QB in the game? You have offered on the game. Why isn't your backup QB? The game isn't about the game is about scoring, isn't it? I don't know protocol. 
you should have called me and told me when to pull up. As long as the other team is trying to score, we're trying to score. That's my rule. Does that even sound remotely believable to you? Or does that sound like Dion has a personal pill that he wants to take out in this team because they talk shit and he doesn't like it. And as long as it's his team that's talking shit, it's okay. But the second someone else talks shit to them, it becomes, oh, I have to have a personal vendetta because I have to try to embarrass people. Because that's what I do. That's who I am. Here's what the other thing, here's what could have happened. And here's what should have happened. And I credit CSU for not doing it. But in this situation with 144 left in the game over, CSU could have lit Shador Sanders up, and they didn't. And this coach, Coach Deion Sanders, puts his offensive line in peril. He puts his quarterback in peril. He puts unnecessary danger on his team because his ego is so goddamn big that he has to score because this is personal for him. He's still holding a grudge over what the guy said a year ago about not being raised right. Well, we we already know. Like, whatever. Who cares? But you're sitting here saying that you're trying to score because they're trying to score? Well, they don't have the ball. They could have called timeout. They didn't call timeout. They had two timeouts left. They did not call them. They are letting the game go. They let go of the rope. The game's over. Instead, what happens is your son drops back to pass. He could have gotten lit up. And – I credit CSU coaches for not telling their defensive tackles to absolutely light his ass up. Because if you're going to do that, I'm going to light you up. That's the difference between today's football and yesterday's football. Yesterday's football, that shit happens. There's a defensive end that's going to put a helmet under your chin and drive you into the ground as hard as he possibly can and try to take your season away. And Deion Sanders forgot about that kind of football because football today is so ungodly soft that it permits this. Because in a 28-9 game and the other team not calling their last two timeouts, you kneel the ball out and the game is over. It's over. They did not call timeout after the first play on a running play, which means they're letting it go. But let's say if they did call timeout after you ran the ball again. And then you call time, run it again, they call their last timeout. Now it's third down. Now there's 120 seconds. There's there's less than – there's 80 seconds left. You drop 40 on the play clock. You punt the ball. You punt the ball. Game was over. No. Dion wants to score. And Dion will put his own son in, in harm's way to try to score. Because old school football would have lit the Shador Sanders up for that bullshit. It's classless and it's unnecessary. And it's the typical Dion way. <clears throat> and that's while I can credit Dion for making adjustments, then he does this and he embarrasses himself and he embarrasses his program. And he does what he does. I will remind you of this. Travis Hunter is why this team wins. If Travis Hunter is not on this team, this team does not win any games. And yet all I see every week is this man put Travis Hunter on the field for 125 plays a week, a game. Travis Hunter got hurt towards the end of that game playing defense. Again, why is Travis Hunter on the field in that time? It was 28 to three. Why is Travis Hunter on the field in a 28-3 game? You've got to explain this crap to me. Why is Travis Hunter on the field in a 28-3 game? Playing defense. Offense, fine. He's not on that field playing defense. I think Travis Hunter is more valuable to them offensively than he is defensively. Because he actually makes their entire offense go. And he is Shador's um, security blanket. I just don't understand the logic of playing that kid so many damn plays. Deion Sanders is shortening the career of Travis Hunter in the NFL. 
It's the same reason that people say that running backs should not get 35 carries a game anymore. You shorten the lifespan of their career by giving the guy 35 car- 30, 35 carries a game, which is why teams have now adjusted. They only give running backs 20, 25 max, typically. But again, you shorten careers, and you're shortening Travis Hunter's career. Travis Hunter's a freaking amazing football player. Stop shortening this guy's career by because of your selfish needs and selfish reasons. But again, Colorado made adjustments. They won the game. They earned that win. They did what they had to do. And let's see if they can continue to do that. And I will credit Dion. They outcoached Colorado State thoroughly. Thoroughly outcoached them. Thoroughly outcoached them. And they earned a, they earned an important win. Obviously, it's a rivalry game. But now is when it all matters. Now is when you get to play your conference. And let's see what they got. Let's see what they got. When do they play next? They play, do they play, they play Baylor. I know that. But when do they play? They play, they have, oh, next week. Next week. So there's no time off. They play on Saturday, Saturday night, 8 o'clock, 921. But that's all I got, man. CU comes up with the big win. They adjust. They ran the ball. And it resulted in a lot different feeling for Shador Sanders. He wasn't running for his life most of the game. That's all I got. Like, follow, subscribe, ring that bell. Come on now.